OK, I'm sorry. Are you ready for me to jump in or were you going to do a, an, a, another introduction or are you ready for me to start? Yeah, I'm going to do the introduction right now. I've just uh, uh, it's yeah we, in, at Microsoft. We need to let you know people that we I'm going to record this session. OK, uh, I guess it shows up to you, right? Showing. Yeah, this session is being recorded. Does it show it to you? I do not see that. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's because yeah, it's a good practice. Like once we go yeah, record the meeting, we say like, oh, we're going to record the session now. So yeah, it's recording now. Um, let's switch back to Portuguese. Uh, pessoal, é, eu iniciei a gravação aqui do nosso encontro e a gente vai começar agora, tá? Eu queria dar as boas-vindas para vocês. É, para quem não me conhece, meu nome é Caio, eu estou falando aqui do, de São Paulo. Eu sou gerente local do programa Reactor e eu sou responsável pela curadoria e execução local é, do programa aqui em São Paulo. Devido à pandemia, a gente está fazendo todos os nossos eventos online e mais recentemente a gente começou, no caso hoje está sendo a primeira vez que a gente está fazendo isso, a gente está começando a traduzir e fazer alguns eventos em parcerias com outros Reactors é, no mundo. Então, acho que esse vai ser um experimento muito legal para a gente e para a galera lá fora também. Bem, o React é um programa global da Microsoft que está presente em mais de 10 países ao redor do mundo. E o objetivo do programa em si é simplesmente ajudar as pessoas a se conectarem, a aprender e a criar com novas tecnologias. Então, tudo que a gente faz, é, o, todo o nosso objetivo é ajudar você a, enfim, evoluir sua carreira, a aprender alguma coisa ou, enfim, a se conectar com novos programas da Microsoft também. Então, toda semana a gente vai promover algum evento diferente, seja um workshop, uma palestra, um painel, enfim, vários conteúdos para ajudar você de diferentes formas. A nossa programação ela é sempre gratuita, aberta e acessível e segue o nosso código de conduta. Falando sobre ele bem rapidamente, o código de conduta da Microsoft é muito sobre promover atitudes e comportamentos é, positivos. Isso inclui também os eventos do React, onde a gente busca oferecer uma experiência respeitosa, amigável e profissional para todas as pessoas, independente de gênero, orientação sexual, aparência, deficiência, idade, raça ou religião. Então, se por acaso um dia você presenciar um comportamento, uma fala, ou até mesmo uma atitude que você julgue é, inadequada, por favor, se dirija ao nosso site microsoftreactor.com. Lá você vai encontrar o nosso código de conduta e um formulário para você fazer uma denúncia, se precisar. Qualquer coisa também eu estou à disposição para ajudar vocês, tá? Bem, passando algumas orientações sobre esse evento, é, eu já vi que o Daniel perguntou se o evento vai ser gravado. Sim, ele está sendo gravado ao vivo e a gente vai disponibilizar esse conteúdo no nosso YouTube. Se vocês tiverem perguntas, a qualquer momento, por favor, utilize o chat. É, vocês podem, enfim, falar comigo, falar com o Ben. Se você não se sentir confortável em falar inglês, é, conte comigo, eu vou estar aqui para ajudar você nessa tradução. É, como vocês estão vendo, né? está é, aparecendo legendas automáticas para vocês em inglês, mas quando o Benjamin começar a falar, vai aparecer legendas em português. E aí quem não souber falar inglês vai ter acesso ao conteúdo da mesma forma. E é, só um pedido de cuidado para vocês não compartilharem nenhuma informação ou dado pessoal que vocês não queiram que a gente comente aqui durante essa transmissão. Né? O conteúdo está sendo gravado ao vivo e a gente pede a ajuda de vocês em relação a isso. Mas beleza, sem mais delongas, agora a gente vai falar sobre construir a marca pessoal, né? Este é o primeiro workshop que a gente está fazendo sobre soft skills, ou em português seria mais habilidades essenciais. Hoje a gente vai falar muito sobre esse, essa questão né, de como desenvolver a marca pessoal e se posicionar melhor no mercado. Então, o Benjamin, assim, eu, ele tem tanta experiência que eu fiquei até difícil em pensar como é que eu iria resumir ou apresentar ele é, de uma forma bem sucinta. Ele trabalha já no mercado de tecnologia já há 20 anos, 25 anos, tem experiências com gestão de clientes, lideranças, já trabalhou na IBM, na Microsoft, enfim, já fez muita coisa legal. E eu não sabia, ele é músico também e tem uma experiência com música. E agora eu acho que... É hora do Benjamin falar. Eu vou, eu vou mudar rapidamente para o inglês, mas eu já volto para o português. Benjamin, I don't know if you would follow the captions. Was it good? I don't know. Yes, I, I was following the captions, and what you said is accurate. I appreciate that. You, you sing, right? Uh, yeah, sing, play the piano, play the trombone, a, a few things. <laughs> so many things. So let's start now. Can you share your screen? Sure, let me do that right now. And let me also just ask to make sure you can see my screen. Uh, yes, I can see it. 
Um, okay. uh, just a final message. Um, pessoal, agora um, a gente vai traduzir, ou oh, as legendas que vão aparecer para vocês vão ser autogeradas, tá? E o conteúdo também a gente tentou traduzir. Então, qualquer dúvida, uh, vocês podem perguntar. What I just said was just like, this is the captioning that is showing up is just live captioning, is automatic, and uh, we are going to try to translate all the contents in these slides. Okay. So yeah, good to go. All right, well, thank you very much for that introduction and not to repeat really much of anything that was already mentioned, but I'm going to be asking you to communicate with me through the chat window. And if there are, you know, whether you're responding to something that I'm asking or whether you have a question just in general, use the chat window. Myself and uh, my colleagues here that are helping moderate this will be watching that chat window. So don't be shy. That's one of the kind of the, the overarching things I share with all of these sessions that I conduct, which is these are much more valuable if there's interaction. So please don't be shy. Feel free to raise your hand, ask questions. Um, even provide comments on what I'm sharing and, and use the chat window to do use the chat window to do that and we will be watching that. So I'm going to go ahead and jump on in. Of course, the topic for today's session is building your personal brand. And in the spirit of jumping right on into this topic, um, I start this session by actually reflecting just for a moment or two at a different type of branding other than personal branding, and that's corporate branding. Um, I've actually been doing this presentation for a number of years now, and there was one point at which I was just doing my research and assembling the data for this topic. And one of the things that, you know, there were, I shouldn't say one, there were a few things that really jumped out to me that to this day are, are still kind of amazing, uh, epiphanies, if you will. And one of those things is just how much branding permeates everything that we do. I mean, if you just kind of just pause for a moment and look around you wherever you might be right now, just look around where you're at and, and you would be able to find a number of brands, whether it's from the clothes that you're wearing to the watch that's on your wrist, to the cell phone that you're using, to the laptop or PC that you're using, to the snacks that you're consuming or drinking, excuse me, brands are just everywhere. And so um, it's amazing to stop for a minute and think about branding at the corporate level and not just how much they permeate everything that we do, but I'm going to ask you a question to kind of draw a little bit more framework around how corporations use branding. So what you see on your screen right now is a world map with some pinpoints in various geographies. Um, of all those pinpoints that you see, I would like you to use your chat window and type which one of those countries spent the most on advertising in the year 2019. And go ahead and just, again, type that into your chat window. I should be able to understand the name of the country that I see you type in there. I see the first person typed in USA. Are there any other um, answers that I can ask you to type in there? Which country spent the most in advertising in the year 2019? Okay, I see a couple responses. I see two USAs and I see one China. So I'm going to reveal to you at this point that the country that spent the most on advertising in 2019 was actually the United States. But now the more difficult question is how much did they spend? And I'm going to ask you to type one, two, three, or four into the chat window. One would be 500 million, two would be 1 billion, I'm sorry, I'm already getting my numbers incorrect. The number one would be 500. <laughs> I, okay, I'm I'm trying to do some translations here really quick, and I'm and I'm 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 making a mistake. So let me just. It's let me just, you. <laughs> so let me just ask you this: um, How much do you think? And you can just type the number into your chat window. How much? In, and I'm going to ask you in billions. How much do you think the United States spent in billions in 2019 on advertising? Any, any guesses there? Go ahead and type them into the chat window. How much in billions did the United States spend in advertising in 2019? I'm going to wait for at least one person to type in a guess. OK, I see 2.5 billion. And of course, this is in US dollars, at least for this, for the way that I'm presenting this. Any other guess? 5 billion. Okay, well, I'm going to reveal the answer and you'll see 
for all of the different countries listed how much was spent in 2019. And not to offend anybody, but those two guesses that were made were not very close. In 2019, the United States spent $197.47 billion on advertising. And if you look around the rest of the world, you can see there at number six is Brazil, 14.89 billion. Um, if you added it all together globally, there is almost $800 billion spent on advertising in the year 2019. Now, I don't know about you, but that is an incredible number. It's almost hard to comprehend that big of a number and how much was spent on advertising. So. My next question, and we're just going to spend one more minute on this corporate level branding topic, which is why in the world would corporations spend that much money on advertising? I'm going to kind of answer that question with a couple of slides. So what you see on your screen here is four logos, and I'm going to go ahead and just rattle these off really quick. I'm sure you all are familiar with these logos. You'll notice Microsoft, McDonald, <laughs> Microsoft McDonald's, Nike, and Starbucks. I'm assuming that most of you could have identified those four. Um, those are the actual logos, but there's also slogans that these companies create. So I'm curious, I'm going to tell you the slogan, and I'd like you to use the chat window to tell me the company that has this slogan. So here is the first slogan, which is, and if my translation is correct, uh, help me out with this one really quick. The, I'm trying to jump over to the translation because I think I got them in a in the oh, reverse really? order. What is this? Am I supposed to speak or? Yes. If you could, if you could say this in English for me, really quick. Uh, some things money cannot buy, but for the rest, there are there okay. is. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I thought I had them in a reverse order. So, I see the first response is American Express. That's close. Um, any other responses as to what company has this slogan? MasterCard, there you go. This is actually MasterCard. And, and I can certainly understand why you'd say American Express because you're identifying um, credit card companies. Let me give you one more here. Um, <laughs> you see the slogan that just appeared on your screen. And uh, go ahead and type the name of the company that owns this slogan. The happiest place of the, the earth. Thank you. What what company has that for their slogan? The happiest place on earth. OK, the first person to respond there. I'm not going to try to pronounce names. I'm I, just out of respect for the individuals. But yes, that was it was Disney. Um, ha, that is their slogan, the happiest place on earth. And then the point that I wanted to make here, just one one last comment before we shift into the personal branding element. One of the things I talk about these epiphanies that I've had over the years as I've created and developed and refined this actual training. We come from an incredibly diverse background, um, whether it's where we were born, where we grew up, where we went to elementary school, where we went to university, where we're working now, the job we had. We've gone through this amazing diverse paths over many years that have all led us here today to be sitting in this session today. And with all those incredibly diverse paths that have led us here today, I can show you a logo or I can show you a slogan. And to a person, we can almost all just rattle off what that company is that I, that owns those logos and slogans. And so if I go back to my question about why would corporations spend almost $800 billion in, in 2019 and, and even more in the, the last year or so. It's because that branding is so incredibly important to their identity and to their success. And so even though we as individuals, we don't have marketing or advertising budgets, I will pose the question to you, how much time, because that's the commodity that you really do have, how much time have you spent either identifying, refining, and marketing your personal brand. And thinking about how much and how important that is to corporations, now you at the personal level, how much have you actually done that? So of course, as we kind of turn the corner here a little bit, as we talk about personal branding, I'm gonna start with just a little bit of a, 
definition of branding, as you're thinking about how much to this point in your life you have invested in creating and marketing your personal brand, I'm going to spend a moment here just talking about what a personal brand is in the first place. So at a high level, whether it's personal or corporate, the most compelling point of what a brand is, is that it really is other people that decide what your brand is. Now, we'll talk in a few minutes about how you can market your brand and how you can work to convey a marketing message to highlight your brand. But at the end of the day, the irony or the really important point to take note of right now is that ultimately it is not you that decides what your brand is. It's all those people that you interact with. It's your boss, it's your peers or your direct reports or your customers. It's all those that you interact with that ultimately get to decide what your brand is. And they will develop their kind of perception of your brand in different phases. There will be an initial brand that they make, which is based on their first and initial contacts with you. And then the good thing is, or for the most part, the good thing is that over time, as they continue to interact with you, they will modify that brand and, and you'll get a chance over time to, if to, if you haven't identified and, and communicated the brand you want, you have a chance over time to modify and refine it. So the, the point here that I want you to think about is, you know, a lot of times I'll talk with individuals and they're not even aware that they have a personal brand or I'll ask them if they have a personal brand. And, and a lot of times people will say no, but the really important and even scary to a point thing is you definitely have a brand. You might not know what your brand is, but I promise you every single one of you has a very clear and defined brand by all of those people that you interact with. So if you don't know what your brand is, we're going to talk about that in the next uh, you know, 45 or so minutes. But one of the things that I'll just really quickly point to as a as an additional point of reference to help illustrate the point that I just made. You now I do a lot of these types of sessions where instead of a compacted 60 to 90 minute delivery, we'll do a much more um, lengthy four week long multiple workshops type of delivery where we get to dig into this a little bit more. And in the process of doing those workshops, um, there's a number of surveys that I conduct and one of the questions and one of those surveys actually asks all of the students, you know, when I think of this person, it's easy to identify what their brand is. And I'm sharing this with you just as a point of reference, because when I do that survey and I, and this is just from one of the classes that I did, um, you can see that this class had probably about 80 to 90 people in it. The large majority of people when asked that question are able to just say yes. When I think of this person, I know what their brand is and they very clearly and very strongly know what that person's brand is. So I'm just emphasizing the point that whether you know what your brand is or not, other people definitely have a brand for you. I heard somebody come off their uh, mute for a moment. Is there a question or something that somebody wanted to ask? OK, if, if so, I'm going to keep going, but if you do have questions or comments, again, I'm going to direct you to use the chat window. There's there's a few enough of us on this session that you can also if you if you want to, you can come off mute and ask your question um, over your microphone as well. But again, I'm going to encourage you to ask questions and even make comments in your chat window. So let's go ahead and move on um, the a little bit just a little bit more commentary as to what makes up your brand. So really, you know, it's it's those other people that interact with you. It's the perception and the emotion that they have when they're interacting with you. It's really a reflection of who you are and what you believe, because that comes through in the things that you say and the way that you act. And then it, as I mentioned a minute ago, it's formed through other people's repeated contacts with you. And the last point that I'll make, and we'll spend a little bit more time on this in another slide, is it's really a reflection of your values. You as an individual have a core set of values that kind of dictates how you act and what you do and and how you um, communicate and you. Port you, you convey your brand as a reflection of those values, so. Um, I'm going to quickly make a very, very important point. One of the biggest problems or one of the biggest errors that people make when it comes to their brand and portraying and conveying and advertising their brand is that they make 
a mistake in thinking that image building is an effective use or an effective way to communicate your brand. And I, I want to kind of just share with you, first of all, that that's not the case. Image building is very different than authentic branding. Image building creates a facade around a person. Its effectiveness is very, very short lived and it usually does not align to the individual's values. So let me just quickly give you an example um, of what image building is as opposed to an authentic marketed brand. So a number of years ago, um, I was working on a team in my um, workplace where there was 12 of us that were situated across North America. And we were all in manager roles. We all had a team of direct reports that also had people that they managed. And we, at, uh, at the beginning of this one year, were told that we were going to get a brand new manager. So we all got this brand new manager. And within the first month of them coming on board, they decided that they wanted to have uh, an event where we could all get together face to face because we were scattered across North America. We did everything remotely up to that point. Um, now, just to kind of tee up this example that I'm sharing with you, there were two of us that worked in the same geography, me and, and a peer of mine. And every time we'd go to a team meeting, which was conducted over a video conference call, this colleague of mine would be very, very much focused on their computer. Their head was down, they were doing email, they were, you know, surfing the web, they were doing anything other than really being engaged in the call that was taking place for the team. Now, during the course of that call, if there was a topic or a comment that came up which directly involved them, or if they heard their name, of course, then they would look up, they would engage for whatever time frame the topic was directly related to them, and then they would go right back down to their laptop and their email and their web surfing. Now, this was an observation that I made very easily because I sat in the same location as that individual, but all the rest of us 12 peers also made that observation just through the course of weekly team meetings. We could all see that that individual was very disengaged. And one of the reasons we could see that is that when they did speak up, they would almost always have to ask for a recap of what was being said so that they could understand before they chimed in. And it was kind of annoying. It was kind of frustrating just to see how disengaged they were. So now we now here we all are. We have a brand new manager. We all travel to North Carolina. We're sitting in the same conference room together. Our brand new manager is standing there at the head of the conference room table talking to us about their vision and what they want to do as a team. And about 30 minutes in to that face to face team meeting, this very peer of mine who I just told you about stood up and said, excuse me, everybody, I just want to interrupt for a minute. And I just want to say I'm looking around the room right now and I'm noticing that a lot of you have your head in your laptop and you're doing email and you're not really paying very close attention to what our new boss is saying. And I would just like to say that because we have a new boss and because we don't get a chance to meet face to face very often, I would like to invite everybody to close the lid to their laptops and really engage and really pay attention to what's being said by our new boss. So. My question for you, and this might get a little bit tricky as I ask you to type into the chat window your response, but my question for you is if you were me in that situation and you just saw your peer stand up and make that comment, what would you think about that peer? How would you how would you identify their brand after hearing them make that statement? I'm going to ask you to take a stab at typing into the chat window your answer to that question, and uh, I might need some help interpreting interpreting uh, one or two responses that come into the chat window, but let me let me do that. Direct you to the chat window. What what would your response be? What would your reaction be to that individual as you hear them make that statement? And I, I guess as I'm waiting for a response or two, um, I'll ask if my question makes sense. I want to make sure I've um, positioned my question correctly. I guess it did. Let's see. OK. You can also share. Pessoal, se, se alguém não estiver se sentindo confortável em falar inglês. Um, I see a couple yeah. of responses. Go ahead. É, se, alguém, se alguém quiser falar em português, eu vou ajudar com a tradução. So 
honestly, this one, Andrea, <laughs> that was tricky for me. Um, so how can I translate this, honestly? You know, uh, when I try to make uh, an appearance for others, just to make, yeah, make them to like you or just to make an impression that you're kind of likable. So you're kind of trying to yeah create that thing that, yeah, I don't know the literal translation for this saying, because this is a Portuguese. I don't know if someone who is helping us can help me. Well, what you said is accurate. So, I mean, I can take it from there. And I appreciate the responses that I do see in the chat window and the translation that you have provided because it, it aligns with what my observations and feelings were. When that peer of mine stood up and made those comments, the brand that I gave them was hypocritical, uh, arrogant, two-faced, inauthentic, insincere. It was incredibly frustrating for me to hear them stand up and make that statement. And the ironic thing, like I was mentioning about it, or the, the ironic thing that I was mentioning a few minutes ago is that unfortunately, a lot of people think that image building is effective. They think that to do something like that is, is going to pay them some sort of good results. But almost always, if you're just doing image building, it is so easy to see through and almost always has a negative effect, as opposed to if you're sincere. Now, let me just give you a really quick example and then we'll move on. Now, if this peer of mine would have stood up and said, you know what, I just want to say something. First of all, I want to acknowledge that I'm the worst at this. I acknowledge that whenever we're in a team meeting, I am usually face down doing email and not really engaged. But now that I'm here face to face with our new boss, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to say that I've got an issue with this, but I'm but I'm committing for the rest of this offsite to really be engaged and close my laptop and really focus. And I think the rest of us should do that as well. Now, if they would have said that, that would have been fantastic. That would have been incredibly sincere and aligned with who that person was, and it would have helped. That that would have been sincere branding as opposed to image building. So I hope that example makes sense. Makes sense. I have some other examples that I can give, but I'm going to, in the interest of time, move us along and talk about some additional topics really quick. Um, so I'm not keeping up with my slides. I, I had this really cool picture of a laptop that I was supposed to have you looking at while I shared that story. But anyway, I'm going to move on. Um, so one of the areas where I see most of the mistakes that are made on the subject of image building versus sincere branding, it's not that it's always nefarious or it's not that it's always done with an ill intent. There's some blind spots and these are some of the big blind spots that are innocent blind spots, but they're still blind spots that people do have. And I kind of refer to this as uh, brand and value misalignments. You know, a lot of times people will think or say that I'm a team player. I'm very cooperative. I'm a team player. But if you ask the people around them, they would say something otherwise. A lot of time people say that the family, my family is the most important thing to me or um, that, you know, I'm an expert in my field where if you were to ask the people around them to interact with them, that's not the brand that they see in that individual. And just another much more quick story that I'll share with you, like family first, because I know a lot of people say family is the most important thing to me as my own personal example that I've always believed that I've always wanted and always told people that family is the most important thing to me. Many years ago when I was right in the middle of a certain period of my career um, where I was working lots and lots of hours uh, for an extended amount of time, I came home one day. Um, my children, for the most part, had already gone to bed because I got home so late and I walked into my daughter's room and I sat down on her bed just to say goodnight to her before she fell asleep and I'm having a what I thought was a really um, nice conversation with her and she turns to me and she said daddy you're not like the other daddies and we live in a cul-de-sac where there was other houses with lots of other children and when she said to me daddy you're not like the other daddies at first I thought, well, that's cool. I am not like the other daddies. I'm funny or I'm whatever. I was looking at it in a positive light. And she followed that statement up with me by saying, all the other daddies come home before it gets dark. <laughs> so um, that broke my heart, but it really helped me understand that as much as I was trying to say that family is the most important thing to me, that was a bit of a misalignment of my brand versus my values. And the same thing about expert in field, just as a really quick um, point of reference. You know, I have worked 
a lot with individuals in counseling on this topic. And a lot of times I'll have individuals try to build, well, we're gonna talk about a brand promise in just a minute. And a lot of times people will kind of come up with a brand promise or a marketing or, or creating a social networking uh, presence, which says that they're an expert in their field when they've only been working in their field for maybe two or three years. So when you think when you think about an expert in your field, you're talking about somebody that has spent virtually an entire career, 10, 15, 20 years or more. Um, and that's when you get to the point where you can start identifying yourself as a true expert in your field, as opposed to somebody that's newer to their field. So those are just some examples where as we continue this conversation, I want you to be really, really focused on um, what is your authentic brand? Because we're going to talk in a minute how you're going to build a brand promise. You're going to talk about more about values and how to create and start marketing your brand, but you really have to make sure it's al aligned to your authentic values. So um, just a quick, uh, I see a comment there in the comment window. Um, I'm not sure if that's something that needs my response or not, but I'm going to keep going um, and then ask if there's a translation for that for me. No, it was, it was related to the thing that someone said before that I didn't know how to translate. OK, all right, perfect. So it, as we kind of now shift gears and come to another point of this presentation, um, I want you to start thinking about how is it that other people see you? Do other people see you the way that you want to be seen and if they don't and we're going to talk in just a minute about how you'll find out if they do or they don't but if they don't it usually boils down to one of two things if people don't see you the way that you want to be seen there's one of two things that are usually the problem one is that you have not aligned your brand with your values or two you're not spending enough time marketing your brand so let's go ahead and uh, move on um, you know, you, you're going to see on your screen here a, a list of just some some of those kind of adjectives that people would use to define you and to define your brand. And I want you, as we kind of have this ongoing conversation, to be thinking in the back of your mind, truly, how is it that other people see you? What are the words? What are the adjectives that other people are going to use to describe you? Because remember, it is other people that determine what your brand is. OK, so before we get into some of the real content around how to understand your brand and how to change your brand, I want to spend just a really quick minute talking about why it's so important to do so. I won't spend a lot of time on this, but I, I do want to tell you, you know, I, I've spent um, almost 30 years now in the IT space in my career. And for 25 years of that career, I've been in a people manager role, either managing direct reports or managing managers that manage direct reports. And in all that time, I have seen so clearly that those individuals that have a strong brand, that have a strong, really well marketed brand, they simply see career advancement and growth opportunities and leadership opportunities at a much higher pace than those that don't. Additionally, when I think about why it's so important to have a strong personal brand, those individuals almost always have better performance evaluations, which leads to better financial compensation, which leads to better job security. I guess there's one point that I wanted to mention on this previous slide. The last point that you see there um, asks, does your name come up? So again, in all those years that I've spent in a people management role, most companies, most corporations have uh, a process where maybe once or twice a year, they'll sit down and they'll evaluate your performance. And then based on that evaluation, you know, you could get a promotion or you could get a, an increase to your compensation. Well, having sat through hundreds and hundreds of those sessions, what, what typically happens is that all the managers in an organization come into a room and they sit down and they talk about every individual in the organization. So as a manager, it's now my turn to represent this direct, direct report. And then I have to represent my next direct report. And as I represent them, I tell the people in the room who are my peers, the things that are their strengths, I talk about their accomplishments and why they deserve a promotion or or what however it is I want to present that person. Now I've sat in so many of those conversations where after one of the managers presents one of their direct reports for consideration, another manager in the room will raise their hand and say something like, 
you know, I've been in this organization for almost a year and I have never, not once have I heard that person speak up. I have never heard their voice. I have never seen an email from them. You're talking about these great things that they've done. Well, I haven't seen it. I'm, you know, I'm not aware of any of that. And so obviously I think we would all love to be a fly on the wall for those conversations. But again, think about how your name comes up. It's that whole branding element where other people are determining your brand. And it's one thing for people to be saying, hey, this person's fantastic. They're, you know, creative thinker. They're always exceeding quota. It's a whole nother thing if they say, oh, I don't know. I don't know who that person is. I don't have any interaction with them. I've not heard them speak. I don't have any idea what who they are. That's almost as bad as if they're saying bad things about you. So one last comment on this topic of why personal branding is so important, and it really boils down to, um, again, in, in all the years that I've spent working managing people, those individuals that have a strong personal brand, they really have a, just a, a strong sense of confidence and direction. They're happy in their job. They're confident. They know what they're doing. They know where they're going. And it just shows through what they do and who they are. Those are all very compelling reasons to be spending time, not just today. I'm very glad that you're here today talking about this, but also after today and the next steps that you're going to take to further your personal brand, because it really will pay a return on that investment. And I'll, I'll come back to this message right as we're ending the session here um, in a little bit. But I promise you that if you invest the time and the energy to understand, modify, and market your brand, it will definitely pay dividends. Okay, so now we've kind of talked a lot about what branding is, why it's so important, how it's not image building, but it's really true value aligned branding. Now we're going to spend some time talking about how to actually, first of all, understand what your brand currently is and then what you can do to change it. And as I go through this, I'm again going to just pause periodically just to see if you have any comments or questions as we go and ask um, that they, you call them out to me if, if, I'm, if, if I'm not seeing them in the chat window. Feel free to interrupt me and just, and, and I'll direct my attention to those comments. So um, let's talk about how to actually start understanding your brand. And I call this knowing thyself. If you really want to start down the path of understanding what your brand is, this is not an exercise for you to sit down and you from your own perspective start trying to answer the question about what your brand is. That's not the way to do it. The way to really understand what your brand is, again, because it's others that identify your brand, is to talk with those others. There's tons of tools out there um, that you can use. I'll talk about those in just a second, but you really have to sit down and have an on, take an honest inventory of who you are and what your skills are and what your strengths are. What is your unique value proposition? What differentiates you from everybody else? How do you stand out from the crowd? And that's a really important exercise to go through if you're going to take this seriously, is to truly understand who you are, not from your perspective, but from other people's perspectives. Then once you've done that, you can start um, taking the next step. Now, what's interesting to me is that that concept that I just shared about knowing who you are and your value proposition and how you stand out, it's much easier to kind of contemplate that message if you think about a corporate brand. At least we'll do that to begin with. So I am going to ask you to use your chat window here in just a moment. And I want you to think about these two brands. Of course, these are two automakers. Let's go ahead and start with BMW. Go ahead and use your chat window. And I want you to tell me in the chat window, what is BMW's brand? When you think of BMW, what do you think about that as an automobile company? What's their brand? Go ahead and just type that into the chat window. I'm, okay, uh, sports car, German car. I think that I can do that translation. Sporty German car. I see somebody else, a luxury car. Thank you for that. In, any other, okay, perfect. Status, luxury, sporty, German. Anything else anybody wants to type in there? Quality, great quality. All right, perfect. Though 
those are perfect responses. So now I'm going to ask you to do the same thing, but I want you to tell me what is the brand for Kia? Go ahead and type your responses into the chat window um, regarding Kia as an automobile manufacturer. I see that my chat window is indicating that there's multiple people typing. I'm going to wait just for a moment for some of those responses to come through for the brand that you would give to a Kia automobile. I see cheaper car. I'm not sure what the translation of Barato is. The same thing. It was just funny. funny. Okay. Uh, <laughs> both answers. <laughs> any, any other brands that you would like to throw out there around Kia? Now, as as a couple, as I wait for a couple more of you to to type, okay. Now I'm seeing low quality and cheaper. I'm going to put a little bit of a spin on that. Um, I don't know that any of you. I, I've never owned a Kia. I don't know if any of you have ever owned a Kia, but there is a different. There's different words that you can use that don't have as much of a negative connotation. For example, instead of saying cheaper car, well, cheaper car isn't a, a bad connotation because it is cheaper than a BMW. But it, you could use the term affordable or um, budget conscious. Um, I see low quality, but another way that you could kind of refer to that is family focused, budget focused, um, daily use. There are a number of adjectives that you could use to describe Kia. Practical, um, I see daily use, practical, family use, smart, um, smart budgeting, um, and so here's my follow up question to that. Because Kia has established its brand and it's a very successful brand and and there's nothing wrong with that brand that actually the brand that Kia has developed is a very, very valuable brand. They deliver a commodity to consumers that consumers want, not all consumers, but certainly many consumers. There's many consumers that want that affordable um, practical family low cost car. There are other consumers that want the sporty, luxurious, prestigious car, but they're both valuable brands. And the point that I'm trying to make here is that as you think about yourself as a brand, it, you know, we look at a corporate example like automobiles, but you need to start applying that same concept to yourself because when it comes to your branding, you have to be able to communicate what it is that makes you unique and communicate what your value proposition is and how you stand out from the crowd. I can't tell you over the years how many times I've conducted interviews and, and many of those interviews have been for people that are seeking a manager role, somebody that wants to be a people manager and they'll sit across the desk from me and I'll ask them a number of questions. But of course, one of the questions that I ask is, why should I hire you? What is it about you that makes you um, a compelling person that I should hire to be a people manager. And so often I would get the individual that would sit back and, and tell me something like, well, I'm a people person. I really, really enjoy working with people and I've got an open door policy. So whoever I manage, I'm going to do a really good job working with them because I'm such a people person and I've always got an open door. Well, I will tell you that's the answer I get from about 90% of the people that are applying for a job as a manager. That doesn't help me. I need to understand from a branding standpoint what it is that is unique to you. What is compelling? How do you stand out? How, did, how do you differentiate, differentiate yourself from all those other people that are also people persons? So when you think about that at a personal or a career level, you know, there's a lot of different ways that you can think about it. Are you, you know, you could be uh, an incredibly analytical person who's a wizard with spreadsheets. You can be a very creative person that thinks outside the box and who, who has always been renowned for your idea generation and brainstorming. You can be somebody who is motivational, who's a really great, great salesperson, motivational speaker. You can be a fantastic programmer. You can have programming skills in a certain language that are incredibly unique. But whatever it is, as you start thinking about your brand and how to communicate your brand, you have to, like we talked about a minute ago, you have to first of all spend the time to know what your current brand is by asking people, but you also then have to start working to identify how 
you are unique and how you are going to stand out and what your value proposition is. Now, having said all that, I also just you know, share a couple personal examples. This is one that I would say, you know, if I'm going to start telling a prospective employer about myself and how I stand out from the crowd and my value proposition, I'm going to talk about how I'm really, really effective at leading change and change management. I'm going to talk about how I've had years and years of experience at developing business strategy and that my results are always high impact, that I've developed and managed my teams to a high level of performance where we exceed our goals and we exceed our quotas. I'm going to talk about organizational health and how I've always led the organization that I'm in with the highest organizational health for my team as compared to other people. Anyway, you get the idea. That's something that you really need to start thinking about as you distinguish yourself and start building your, your really impactful brand. So I know that I'm jumping around a little bit here, but as you're thinking about these ideas, um, there's just a comment here. I probably should have had spoken about this a minute ago, but remember the two step process we're talking about. The first step is to identify what your current brand is. And you know, you can see on your screen some of the different tools that are available for you to figure that out. You see that last comment there is just ask, just ask people, sit down with them, people that you trust, people that you know that are going to give you straightforward feedback and valuable constructive feedback. Just ask what your brand is. Most of you are probably in a in a situation where you have a job and you have a boss. Sometimes that conversation that you have with your boss can be you know, frustrating or uncomfortable, if, if especially if you don't think that they see you the way that you really are. But regardless, they're the ones that determine your brand. And so there is incredible value to what they have to say, because that is your brand. Don't ever lose out on the opportunity to talk with people and understand what your brand is, because it's from those conversations that you will then identify the things that you need to modify and change both in your behavior and also in the marketing of your brand. OK, I'm going to move us along. What you see here on your screen is just a list of values. We've all we talked about uh, of values in the past. Um, there's an entire courses that you can go through where you spend almost an entire day starting with the list of like, a, you know, a thousand different values and narrowing that down to what your top three values are. And you can do that yourself. Um, there's a lot of um, material online that you can use to do that. It's really helpful um, to the standpoint if you can go through that exercise and identify what your top three values are, that's going to speak a lot to then how you start marketing and advertising your brand. You know, I mentioned a minute ago that I do this course over a much more uh, longer delivery period. And when I do this course in a full month long four workshop um, format, one of the deliveries that I ask each of the attendees to walk away with is their brand promise. And so we won't have time to do that in the session that we have today, but I want you to think about what is your brand promise? This is my brand promise. I'm a driven, articulate, fun leader who achieves exceptional results through a refine, through refined people management, change management, and work ethic. Um, what is your brand promise? And one of the best steps that you can take before you start building your brand out on social media is to create this right here. Once you've identified what your brand promise is and who you are, what's really, really great is that in today's society where we currently <laughs> exist, there are some very powerful tools that you can then use to start marketing that brand. They're powerful tools that did not exist not too many years ago. And so what's really great is that these are at your disposal. And I talked a minute ago on the same point, but you know, you th there are classes and courses that you can go to that are dedicated specifically about how to use these tools effectively. I'm going to assume that most of you have some experience with these social networking tools, but this really is your opportunity to market yourself. If you're going to go to a job interview, if you're going to talk with anybody about who you are, I can promise you that almost always they will go to one of these social networking sites and look you up and see how you are marketing yourself. So you have to be very aware of these tools and use them effectively to communicate your brand. And then also in addition to those tools, networking, 
is an incredibly powerful and important tool that you need to use. And there's courses that are dedicated just to networking as well. Um, but networking, uh, I don't know if, if you just take a moment and reflect on the jobs that you've had in your career up to this point, ask yourself the question, how many of those jobs did you get completely cold with nobody that knew you from the hiring entity versus how many of those jobs did you get because you knew somebody there that put in a good word for you or maybe you even knew the hiring manager networking is incredibly important and again i don't mean to be too redundant but because it's other people that determine your brand that networking has to be authentic so that they're willing to put in a good word for you that they're willing to promote you and help you achieve that desired position or job and that all boils down to how you're marketing your brand to them so i'm looking at the clock we don't have a lot of time left um i'll before i kind of turn the corner and share one last few um, points with you I, I wanted to just pose the question again do people see you the way that you want to be seen and again if the answer to that question is no it's probably because either one you're not aligning your brand to your values or two you're not spending enough time marketing your brand so in the few minutes that we have left and i'm gonna i'm just gonna say this and, and um, invite an interruption if i need to be redirected but i'm gonna go ahead and for the last few minutes share some concepts that i believe are really really important about protecting your brand and if any of you, because we're coming up on the, the bottom of the hour, or sorry, the top of the hour, um, if any of you need to drop, I understand, but I'm gonna spend some time talking about what I consider to be some really important points. And those points are, you know, think about it. You, you either have or are going to spend all this time creating a powerful brand, understanding your brand, refining your brand, then networking and marketing your brand. But if you don't um, do that carefully, and if you're not careful, there are some real big roadblocks that you can run into. You know, you know, a reputation that has taken a long or a lifetime to build can be threatened by a single event. You can think about sports figures or politicians or other people that you know that have kind of run into this problem. And almost always it has to do, almost always, it has to do with communication. Because if you think about it, yes, the social networking tools are great. You can use Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, you can lose, use some of those really great tools, but at the end of the day, it's, it's communication that's used either through those tools or face-to-face -face that is delivering your message. And so as I talk about protecting your brand, there's just a couple things that I think are really important to call out. So from the standpoint of email communication because that's so prevalent in how we do our work and how we uh, communicate with people. Um, I just wanted to share a quick story. So a, a number of years ago, I was managing a team of individuals um, and one of them had a direct report who was probably the smartest person that I'd technical from a technical standpoint was the smartest person that I'd ever known. They were just genius relative to technical aptitude, but they were a very, very brash, loud, arrogant in, in, uh, arrogant individual when they communicated and they were always offending people. They are always making people upset and hurting feelings. And and I always had I had this kind of dilemma whether it, it was worth to keep them on board because of all their technical aptitude and then weighing that against their really bad communication. Well, at one point in that uh, job, I got a letter from this individual and I'm sharing a snippet of that letter on your screen. They basically said that they were quitting. They'd had enough in their role. They were quitting the job that they were in. They were leaving. They've had enough. You know, it's not a good job anymore. The business has never been in the hands of such a dysfunctional group. They're not going to waste their time anymore. This team has a serious lack of leadership and on and on they went. So when I read that email from them, my response, and now I had left the organization a couple years um before this before this letter came out they just put me on the cc line but when i read that letter from them my initial response was yep they haven't changed a bit that's exactly who they are um, they're probably still just as genius from a technical aptitude but their communication skills really through email are are hurting <laughs> and so here the the follow-up or the conclusion to the story was that email was sent out in september 
the end of September. You can see the date there in 2010, so it's been a while ago. But the following February of the next year, I got another individual email, or I got another email from this individual saying, hey, Ben, hope all is well with you and the family. I'm just pinging you to see if you had any openings in your organization. So my question for you, and again, you can use the chat window to give, give your response. But if you were me and you received this email from that individual, would you consider them for a role in your organization? And you can even just type in yes or no in the chat window to tell me what you think. Um, but I'm curious. All right, I see at least one comment that says no. And I believe that if each of you took the time to respond to that question, the answer is no. Despite their really great technical qualifications and aptitude, their communication was a showstopper. Their communication, that was their brand. It was the way they communicated an email. Now, my, my recommendation to you here, and this is something that I've learned from observation and also from personal experience, you will come to points in your career, to points in your job where you might be very frustrated or very angry with an individual. And you sit down and you open up an email and you start typing the email, whether it's to them or to your boss, and you're just letting them have it. My strong, strong recommendation is if you ever find yourself in a situation where you're writing one of those emails, is to wait at least 24 hours before you send it. Go ahead and write it, finish it, and then park it in your draft folder and wait at least 24 hours before you actually send it. Because when you come back 24 hours later and read it again, almost all of the time you will sense that you are too harsh and that the message you're sending is going to damage you and damage your brand as opposed to accomplishing what you really want to accomplish, which is to get them to change their behavior. So that's just, you know, this last few comments I'm sharing with you are all about protecting your brand. And that email a bit of advice is one of the biggest points that I can give to you. A couple other things I'm going to run through really quick. Um, what you see on your screen right now are images that I captured. And I'm curious, I'll just ask you again um, from the in the chat window, where do you think that I gathered these images from? Any guesses as to where I where I grabbed these images? Well, I'll tell you what, I know that we're it's a little bit over the end of the hour, so I see email and Google. That's close. It, well, it's actually accurate. They're, these are actually avatars. In most email systems, you can attach an avatar to your name, and these are avatars that people chose um, to represent their name in their email um, application. And I'm not necessarily saying these are good or bad, but they definitely convey a brand. Everything that you do and everything that you say and every way that you represent yourself is communicating your brand. And I mean, not to pick on any person specifically, but if you look at the individual um, on the top right who's asleep in a hammock, what is that communicating about their brand? Especially if I'm like somebody that's considering hiring them. Here are a couple more pictures. And I would ask, where do you think I got these pictures? And I'll tell you, you can type it in in the chat window if you want to. I just went out to Facebook and I just started grabbing some images off people's Facebook pages. And these are part of their brand. You have to be very aware of the way that you communicate and the present and the presence that you that you uh, put out there for others to see. When you talk about talking on the telephone, are you distracted? A lot of times people think that they can multitask and that they can effectively, you know, do do multiple things at once. But how many of you have somebody that you've worked with where you notice that they're always multitasking and they're never really paying attention? And you just know that even though they're on the phone call, that they're not really paying attention. That's communicating a brand. Same thing applies face to face. I think most of you have probably had a experience where you have sat down with the boss and had a conversation with your boss and your boss is distracted. They're looking at their email or they're looking at their phone as opposed to spending 100% of their attention on you. That face to face communication will definitely communicate a brand. And it's interesting now that we're in this world of uh, remote work and video conferencing. The same thing applies as well here. How many also I'll just really quick tell you a story about how 
a few years ago, we had a Monday morning team meeting. Every Monday morning, it was early because my colleagues were on the East Coast and spread out across the globe. So that meeting was always at 7.30 in the morning for me. And that's right when I was driving to the office. So every week on that meeting, I would join that conference call on my phone while I was driving to work. After a couple months, my boss in a one-on-one -on -one said to me, Ben, I need to talk with you about your attendance and our voice conference meetings every Monday. It's really frustrating. Every time you're on that call and you speak up, there's a ton of background noise. We can't really understand what you're saying. And it's just really frustrating. You should stop doing that. So you need to think about that, especially in this environment where that's probably how you're attending a lot of your calls. I would also recommend very strongly that when you do attend those calls that you take advantage of the opportunity to turn on your camera and therefore be able to share your presence and your brand with the live video feed, which is incredibly powerful. OK, this is the last slide that I'm going to share with you. I'm sorry, there's two slides left. There's this and one more. That last point that I was making when I was talking about protecting your brand comes down to an additional point around appearance. Your appearance is part of your brand. Now, if you're going to be able to join us for the next session that we do, um, through the Microsoft Reactors program. The topic is thinking and acting and talking like a leader. It's also known as executive presence. I spend a lot more time talking about appearance in that next session. But for right now, when we're talking about building your personal brand, your appearance is incredibly important. Now that doesn't mean that you have to go spend a ton of money on a wardrobe and spend tons and tons of money, but it does mean that when you show up to those meetings and you turn your camera on, that you've put some effort into the way that you show up. Groom your hair, look, you know, look well kept and like you've put some effort into the way that you show up. That does an awful lot in communicating your brand and who you are. All right, I'm going to go ahead and wrap us up here with my final comment, which is just to say in the work environment, your brand is also very much focused on results. You can have a really, really great brand and define your brand and align it to your values and communicate your brand. But if you don't then follow it up with great results, you're going to have a really hard time with a successful communication of your brand. So I'm going to invite you, like I said earlier in the conversation, to spend some time focusing on this topic on this topic and I will promise you that if you do it will pay dividends really powerful dividends so with that I'm going to thank you for the opportunity to be with you today and I'm going to turn the time back over to our moderators all right all right um, um, let, let me see if we have any questions, questions. Um, Pessoal, Pessoal, será que alguém tem alguma dúvida? Queria comentar alguma coisa? Quer falar em português? Uh, ben, I'm going to switch back to my slides so you can follow if someone speaks in Portuguese. Great, I can see it. Great meeting. Olha só, galera. Uh, eu acho que todo mundo gostou do encontro. I guess everybody liked the, the presentation. I appreciate that feedback. Um, if you have comments or questions you want to filter back to me individually, look me up on LinkedIn or Facebook. You'll be able to find me really easily. And I'm happy because I know we've kind of run out of time here, but I'm very happy to respond individually to you if you have any additional questions or comments for me. Per perfect. Um, let me finish finish this event. So um, I'm having problems <laughs> being back and forth in Portuguese and English. Um, então, pessoal, é, a gente vai encerrar, começar a encerrar o nosso evento aqui. É, eu queria convidar vocês, eu acredito que vocês já fazem parte, mas como esse evento vai ficar disponível no nosso canal do YouTube, se você estiver vendo essa transmissão, existe uma, comuni uma comunidade de pessoas que gostam de tecnologias e compartilham coisas. A gente fica aqui em São Paulo, mas o React é uma comunidade global, existem em vários outros lugares do mundo. É, se você quiser acompanhar os nossos eventos, só acessar o nosso grupo no Meetup. É, toda a sessão que a gente faz, a gente compartilha um... um uma pesquisa de satisfação. Então, se você puder reservar um ou dois minutos para ver se está tudo certo, se você puder reservar um ou dois minutos para ver se está tudo certo. Desculpa, eu estou lendo a, a transmissão. 
Ben, I have the same problem as you. Like uh, as I'm speaking, I'm just checking the the captions and I'm <laughs> just like, is this the right one? <laughs> um, Pessoal, então eu queria compartilhar com vocês a nossa pesquisa de satisfação. Todos os eventos a gente compartilha. É muito bom para nos ajudar a melhorar os nossos eventos e ver se está tudo certo é, com o conteúdo. É, eu vou deixar o link aqui para vocês no chat, se vocês puderem responder também. E semana que vem a gente tem um outro encontro com o Benjamin na quinta-feira, às 19 horas. Nesse encontro a gente vai falar um pouco sobre como pensar e atuar como um líder né, ou uma liderança. E é isso, é, o formato vai ser muito parecido com esse, eu, inclusive eu quero perguntar para vocês o que é que vocês acharam, se foi tudo bem para vocês, se foi ruim, se esse formato com tradução instantânea está tudo bem. E é isso, galera, eu só tenho a agradecer, eu vou encerrar a gravação aqui e até a próxima. Tchau, tchau. Se alguém quiser alguma pergunta, falar fora da, da gravação também. Valeu, galera.